heading into this matchup, the Dark Region versus the Ultra League, Big versus Kick. Uh, is it going to be the first real barometer in Group A in terms of those two powerhouse regions? Uh, and I think... I think I'm expecting Big to come in as the slight favourites, if I'm honest with you. I, I think I think Big come in as the slight favourites into this matchup. But you, you, as we said, the Ultra League are the defending region. And in terms of you, you actually, actually, I want, I want you to tell me what you you told. Sorry, you to tell the stream what you told me off air, Foxy. In terms of Kicks relative internal region strength, the way that they played those best of fives, because it's very difficult to gauge how strong these teams are coming into the European Masters. Yeah, I, I think uh, all the Polish teams are looking pretty much equal in strength because they all play each other in best of fives in their domestic playoffs and they all went to five games. So really like one game difference and you could have Illumina as the winner or Kick as the winner or, you know, like the seeding I think isn't as important for Poland. So I do think like Kick, sure, they're not the first seed, but the expectations should still be pretty high for these guys. As we are heading into the draft for Big versus Kick, Obviously, their first games in EU Masters weren't that great. Yes, Big was still able to pull out the W, but uh, not really convincing. They were definitely losing, uh, I was going to say big time, yeah, losing pretty handedly uh, until they won. Uh, but still, a lot of bands coming in pretty fast here. Thresh GP, Oriana for Big, and the Hecarim Jinx, and Seraphine. Okay. They didn't ban SLT's Sorry. Quinn. Or Zoe. Oh, yeah. yeah or Zoe. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and uh, so there are there's some interesting picks yeah. that we saw from Big yesterday. SLT on the Quinn, obviously, was probably the main reason that Big were able to win. But the Tristana, a very strong pick on this patch, does get logged in for Big. And as you said, yeah. Matis Law Zoe has not been uh, taken away. So if he would like that, it is a relatively strong blind, especially if you're a good Zoe player. Uh, so they could pick that up. Do you think Matt is a good Zoe player? No. I, I think I, I think most yeah, Polish maybe. mids are good Zoe players, but Matis Law specifically <laughs> is an excellent Zoe player. I think if you've been yeah. to any European Masters that Matis Law has been a part of, uh, you'll have heard about his Zoe probably numerous times on broadcast. Uh, he is a he is a damn good Zoe player, that's for sure. I'll say it one more time as well, since it's a tradition, I suppose. Since if you put it that way. Matisol Zoe, ridiculous. 90% ban rate against him in Poland. Don't give Matisol Zoe. However, having said that, the Trisana first pick, very strong champion in the current meta. Uh, also a good flex pick. All right, I was going to say, go, yeah. I'm not <laughs> sure of the matchup in that mid lane, but Matisol says, screw it, I'm picking it anyway. Uh, this is going to be a real treat already. Anytime that, that guy gets that champion, mm, delicious. Yeah, he, he knows every matchup incredibly well. He, he somehow bends those stars angles that you didn't think were possible uh Mattis law is is I'm, I'm hyping up here he might just get absolutely stomped you never know but uh it, it is what it is well, Mattis law has got one of his best champions so you were expecting a strong performance from him it's the, the blind now coming out here as well i would imagine that big want to secure themselves a strong jungler here before we go to the second round of bans but of course other options are on the table like securing your support as well it is interesting how Kick have opted more into the Lilia than than the Udyr, uh, because I do think Udyr has a Ooh, higher priority hey. than Lilia does. All right, we are going to get the Akali lock in instead, though. Akali into into Zoe. So yeah, I'm guessing they're not going to. Well, so so I find it a bit interesting that you pick your mid laner here because it does kill the flex for Tristana, and I do think that that's always a nice thing, you know, being able to hold hold on to uh, hold on to cards as long as you can. But either way, I think you know Kick now do have that option of knowing uh, the solo lane matchups, knowing who's going down in bot lane. They can also also pinch the jungle pool a little bit here for Karim, make him uh, be a little bit less comfortable on those champions. Well, I guess then you start to pinch the AD carries in response from Big because you have the Tristana, the Jinx is already banned. You ban a couple of other strong AD carries away and uh, and start to make it a little bit more difficult for Pookie style. Now, Udyr, that's an obvious ban coming through. He made it all the way through to that ban phase, which is not particularly typical. Uh, and I imagine, I mean, think about Pookie style though, is he's not the kind of guy that is going to play the same sort of hard carry AD carries He's the, he's the kind of chap that would play Ash, for instance, just lock in the Ash randomly in a lot of situations and happily play that uh, and just run as a utility any carry for his team. So that's why Pookie style has a lot of value because he just has a lot of flexibility yeah. in that role. Yeah, I'm curious. Uh, I was just going to say, I'm curious to see whether actually Sion might be like a support for a center here because Pookie style has played a lot of center. 
Um, and you know, that could be like a, a bit of a throwaway right there, but nope, Senna gets banned away. We're gonna follow the Udi with Nocturne. Nocturne might seem a little bit surprising. Yeah, he is rising in priority, but still not being seen as like a top, top tier jungler, but uh, Karim has played a lot of Nocturne. It's his second most played champion, so just gonna take that one away. That is gonna be the Kaiser and the Senna. So when you combine Trisana, Kaiser, Senna, and Jinx being taken away here, uh, Pookie style, there, there, there is most play champions are all gone now. So he's going to revert back to the Varus. So a lot of this actually previously in EU Masters, Varus is a very strong champion right now as well. Depending on the build he wants to go, you've got a lot of t uh, pokes set up as well, matching with that Zoe and not a lot of big beefy bodies to soak up the poke on the side of big. So we'll see how they round out their comp. I think they want a bit more of a front line. You do have Nar, but maybe you want a little bit more. And there's that going to be that rail locking. Yeah, Rel will get locked in, but Alistair is still up, so the, like, the immediate answer uh, that is usually locked in Dude. alongside is the uh, the Alistair. Now, this would be interesting for Karim, just going very yeah. aggressive, looking for, for a lot of duels, a lot of ganks, just trying to put pressure on before uh, Brunes can even get out of the jungle. Dude, he's not going to do it, but do it. So he does it. Oh, he did it. Okay, okay, okay. This is this is exciting. So the so the current meta for Lee Sin is tragic. Okay, it's absolutely awful because you want to power through the jungle and you want to have that early pressure. Lee Sin actually doesn't really match up very well into champions that you see a lot in the meta right now, like the Hecarims and the Udis, and doesn't farm as quickly as people like Lilia. So it's really not really he's not really found his place in the meta. Plus, the mythic items doesn't really have a great mythic item either. But e either way. As far as matchups go, if you are going to play versus a meta jungler, Lily is a pretty good one to play against because you can put pressure on her. You can, you know, fight her. You can try and invade her. You're not going to be able to keep up with her her farm, but you will be able to kind of uh, throw a spanner in the works of her early game. So we'll see through some lane priority, which it looks like he should have quite a lot of uh, if he if he can get those early plays going down. I'm excited. We'll have to keep our eyes on Karim this game because he is playing well, an influential role. But in terms of the actual comps, what, what are these comps designed to do? I, I'm just getting the impression from Big that, you know, they could transition that into a 1 3 1. You have a Nara and an Akali, like they are going to look for side lane pressure. Uh, but what do you see from, from these two comps? Like, what, what, what are we looking for in terms of win conditions? I think, honestly, this is a better question to ask me in the game because I've already forgotten what the teams have picked. But, uh, <laughs> no, but I do. So I think there's a lot of... You've got, you've got the Varus and uh, Varus Braum in bot side for, for kick. I think com combine that with the Zoe, like you are going to have opportunities to catch people out of position. Yeah, a lot of pick uh, potential. Also, right, you have a lot of pick potential. You've got some decent front line as well so that you can walk up with your squad to throw down that poke. You've got Sani top as well. And from the, from the side of, uh, of big as well, I do like the fact that you mentioned the one three one though I think both Nar and Akali are champions that can make that happen, especially against Kick's team comp. I don't think Kick is going to be able to match up to big in the one three one in those side lanes. And I do think that, that Lee Sin is a champion that's fairly good playing with one three one because he's much better in small skirmishes and grouped up fights. So if he does want to kind of assist a champion on the side lane, he can absolutely do that. And it does work into Lee Sin's wheelhouse. But of course, one three runs do kind of rely on your solo laners either being even or even uh, even better ahead, uh, and so yeah. that's what we're going to have to keep our eyes on. Maybe Karim spends a lot of time mid top, just trying to either snowball SLT or Rika to allow them to get a strong side lane one v one position, so that either Mattis Law or Cat's uh, will find it difficult to uh, deal with them in the one v one pressure. Absolutely. But that's also a thing where Big's team comp has given them some decent flexibility because if you do want to group up, you still have nice potential to do that as well. Yeah. Get that Mega Nar going through, get the Rail engaged as well. I think it's pretty simple to execute Big's comp however you want to do it, whether you do want to go for more of a split push style or if you do just want to group up. Either way, at level one, we are going to see that invade with the Braum. Braum coming more into meta nowadays since his recent buffs. But more importantly, he is one of the strongest level one champions. So going to have that threat early on. I'm going to be able to invade these chickens for free. Looks like uh, Sion is going to walk straight at Karim here, or at least uh, threaten to, because now SLT has moved over towards that red buff. And that's just giving uh, Kaskos the time to ward away SLT from the lane. And he's taking a very, very, very defensive uh, path into the lane, though, to make sure he gets up towards those minions. 
Looks like it will just be red for red trade at the end of the day, though. Although I'll say that, um, Brunes has not yet started the red buff. He's actually going for a full blot side clear into those Krugs as well. And this will benefit Brunes because he is much better at this AoE farming. And the red side jungle, or the jungle with, where the red buff is, has a lot of AoE camps in the chickens and in the Krugs. Whereas, as you can see, Lee Sin, not the best at farming those AoE. So uh, going to take a little bit more time. But splitting this map as well is going to be interesting. We'll see whether or not uh, Big can actually punish at the top side of the map here. The thing is that it's a Scion might be a little bit hard to do. But I'm really curious to see where both these jungles decide to go from this point on. So Bonus now. Looking, hovering around, but should probably just go back into his blue side jungle. Yeah, Bonus just... Uh... Looking for an opportunity bot, but again, don't think it'll be easy to find. The wave is stacking too hard, or the, maybe they're going for an early dive here. I mean, that is a big minion oh. wave. Level ones, that they will soon turn level two. They're going to have to be super careful about this. They are setting up a bot lane. No, they're going to they're going to back away. That's sensible. I, I don't think you can go for this. Yeah, <laughs> that was a bit much. On the plus side, like there isn't a heal for the side of big, so that does make it a little bit easier to go for the dive. On the downside, however, you did have a little bit of a tempo uh, benefit or advantage, I should say, from that level one with Bronis just being Lilia compared to the Lee Sin and didn't really get anything out of that. So instead here, you know, he could be, he could easily have taken like his blue and his grump at this point, but instead he doesn't have anything to show for it. Kind of like a missed opportunity there. He's going to be able to get these uh, these chickens on respawn. And instead, because Karim started at red and not chickens, the time is a little bit off for him. So I want to see if Bronis goes full dedication mode here. Really wants to ruin Karim's day if he goes for those Krugs or if he goes to defend his own chickens, knowing that's what Karim did as well. Well, one of the things that he's got in his favor is just that Mathis Law has had complete mid lane prio the entire game. Like he's had that Akali shoved under tower pretty much from minute one here. And that has allowed uh, Brunus the uh, ability to just walk into the enemy red side jungle relatively scot-free, to be honest, and get away those uh, those Raptors. So maybe just making that decision just based on where the lane was in the mid. Uh, and as you said, Leeson has been completely isolated on the top side here. So he is uh, fully committed to that vertical jungle. Has yet to have an impact in the lanes, though, because it's very difficult to gank Cascos lane because he is just pushed under tower uh, and they couldn't go for an early tower dive there. And uh, yeah. and Zoe's quite difficult to gank anyway, realistically. She's quite tricky and can obviously just sleep you and walk away. So didn't find many opportunities to get onto uh, Mattis Law either. I think this is a bit of a mistake, though, from Karim to uh, you know recall and then play for uh, his bot side jungle. Because I really think, you know, he had an opportunity here to go into the top side of, of Bronis and just take that stuff away as well. Um, I, you know, I, I, I said that Lee Sin doesn't clear that fast and, you know, he's definitely going to clear as fast as Lilia. But if he had done that, he would actually have a farm lead over the Lilia at this point in the game, which is pretty unheard of. You know, it's, it's pretty impressive to actually be at that point. But uh, he's not going to find it. And instead, with the, with the position of this bot wave, I'd be curious as well, he might just decide to go for this dragon. It's a decent time to go for it as Akali is walking back into lane. Lilia should be, or he should know that Lilia's around the top side of the jungle. Might be a little bit free for him. He's posturing. He's thinking about it. Yeah, he's, he's got go. he's got a good bot lane situation to go for the dragon at this point because Pookie Style and Raxo cannot respond to this. Um, yep. I, I guess his worry is Matters Law right now, and maybe that he doesn't have enough information as, as to where uh, Brunis is right now. So he is... So, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is exactly it. This is, as you were saying, what he's worried about. He's level five and Brunis as well. Yeah, Brunis has got the level advantage. Oh, we'll dodge away from the giant twig slam. Uh, but now has to be a little careful as Raxo joins the fight. Karen smites to get the HP back and immediately flashes away. But he's taken low. They're going in. He's absolutely minuscule HP. And LBC has, that takes the, the L. He'll get the first blood here for Pookie Style in the bot lane. Mattis Law will pick up the second kill. One kill will go over to SLT. But honestly, Big absolutely lose out here. It is a two for one overall. Now Mattis Law coming to join the fight. And they'll get the kill. A Oof. double kill the Cascos, and he will walk away as a very, very happy Scion. Great response there from Kick, being able to pick up three kills and counter this play from the Lee Sin. Honestly, the worst thing about this is just the bubble that Rika tanks. Look at that. As soon as that goes down, you just can't contest this anymore. I don't even think that's a terrible 2v2, despite the level difference 
of, of, of Bronis being at a level higher than the Lee Sin. But once you get cho choked out like that, it's just, you just can't do it. And it's just, uh, from this point on, this is a loss fight. I really think, you know, Big should have cut their losses, but instead, wanted to contest this one, dedicate all the TPs. But a great response from Kick right here. I don't know if this led to the Dragon because they did lose their jungler, but either way, they are now like a 2,000 gold lead, I think, in this game. <laughs> Karen <laughs> just emotes at his own red buff at level four. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest, chilling. something that I noticed there as well, Pookie Style had a really, really good flush. Um, he just flushed away from the, the execution from uh, the Akali. So the Akali couldn't pick mm. up the killer, even though, even though his HP bar was very easily within range uh, to go down. He just held his flash into the very final moments so and didn't panic. Good stuff from Pookie Star there on the Varus. And as we can take a look at his build as well, he is going for lethality, which will align with the poke that we were mentioning being a benefit of this Varus Zori composition. And if you're going for more of that auto attack crit build, you can't do so much poke. Ooh. However, yeah, he's, he's asleep. Carry him all! <laughs> that is law. That's why you ban his Zoe. Don't give wow. this man Zoe. That's just that's just rude, though, isn't it? Like walking into his jungle, putting him to sleep. I just, oh mate, like th this is a problem, right? Leeson is now behind. Okay, and it's quite hard for Leeson to get back into the game because he can't just hoover up his jungle like a lot of other champions can. You know, it's not looking good right here for Karim or for Big. Master Sword though on that Zoe definitely is looking pretty good. I mean, Kicker in such a strong position at eight minutes into the game. Um, as you said, Lee Sin when behind feels really awkward to play. And, and Brunes, uh, Brunes has been able to get a very, very strong lead of him. Mattis Law has honestly been really popping off. 20 CS lead over Rika on the Akali, 2-0-2. Uh, has been involved in 80% of the kills that have gone down for uh, for Kick right now. They, the, the Polish team are really off to a good start. They are looking to get their way back. Oh, the damage coming through. Raxo picks up the kill. They are level six. I mean, they have such a huge oh. level advantage. Nice. Nice ultimate coming out, but he will end up dropping a double kill for the support. I think Rika should be able to pick this one up if Karen doesn't. And uh, honestly, uh, Kick trade two for two at the end of the day. Two for two, not too bad, considering the jungler was there and uh, the jungler for, for Kick instead is taking the Herald. So not a bad trade right there. I think Kick will be pretty happy with that one. Unfortunately, though, for Karim, he was only level five for most of that play and only dinged six after Pookie Style had died. But it's okay, because Kedu was there to make the insect play instead with that just <laughs> Ooh, SLT is coming through here. Will not get uh, slept up though. Brunus taken very Oof. low. We'll have to smite that away. There comes oh! Oh, the Scion damage. That was disgusting, but SLT will flash away. Matters Law will pick up the Rift Herald just to ensure that they have it. Uh, some kills being gifted back over to Big here, and they pick up the Dragon too. So they'll trade cross map for those objectives. I think all in all, that does work out fairly well for Kick right there. I think an early Herald, when you can use it to take down plates, is very, very nice, considering as well that Kick do have this snowball going early on. You can get some extra gold there, which is going to help them to kind of transition this game from winning into one. That first Dragon not meaning a huge amount either for the side of Big. But I do want to say, you know, SLT getting that kill is quite nice because, like, they were Big was kind of struggling to really find a footing in this game. And the fact that he was able to pick up basically a free kill because his spider senses were tingling on the Herald. Like, this is a player that has done so well on this squad. And even in the last game that they played when he was playing Quinn, my goodness, look look at that. <laughs> I actually don't this? know if I, I don't know if I've seen... Wait, I'll, I'll talk about it in just a moment because that's, that's mid lane tower just going down to Matters Law. But I don't know if I've seen... A professional game where a single player has been 45.8% of the, that, the team's damage. It's just... He was playing Quinn top as well. It's not like it was a 70 minute game where he was picking like a Filios or something. Quinn top! My goodness, yeah. I mean, SLT is just... He's just... He's just constructed alternatively, like, straight up and <laughs> like, giving him... Giving that extra kill. That's good news for Vic. Yeah, and he has that carry potential on the Nara as well. You can make those big plays. I mean, we saw it with Armour and Mad Lions, just absolutely uh, influential in those team fights. Um, the bot lane has been struggling though for Kick, Kedui and Siaz here to Raxo and Puki, who have got a big level advantage and also have uh, a small gold lead as well. Now, Karim has made his way down towards the uh, the bot lane to attempt to influence the gank here, but really not set up properly for it as Puki Style just throws these big, painful arrows directly at Kedui's face. Who 
This happily absorbs them. Yep, he's not gonna be <laughs> he's not gonna mind too much about that one. Matt is saw though, level nine, Tarika's level nine. It looks relatively even right there, but it was a two thousand gold difference. Oh two thousand at this point in the game is just absolutely and, and Mythic already completed to Mathis Law as well, by the way. His Ludens is there. I mean, if you get hit by a Ludens, you know, Mathis Law's Ludens yeah. at this stage in the game, that's a lot of damage. Even if you aren't slept, that's a lot of damage. Yeah, plus those spell pen boots as well, gonna help him against the squishier targets, which there are a lot of from the side of big. Those Merc Treads will help, but not gonna do a huge amount. You know, if you get hit by one of those bubbles, you're still gonna feel it, that is for sure. Two minutes until this next dragon spawns. We'll see as well, now that the mid lane has gone down, like this really becomes the, the game right here is like, Mattislaw pushes out, you get some vision down in the opposing jungle, and then you move around the map and translate that mid pressure you're seeing it here right now into the bot side if someone was there if big was actually under that tower no doubt in my mind they would have gone for a dive there yeah but uh Kedui and uh, cs were just back to that stage but still plates dropping here for pookie style obviously matters law picked up every plate in the mid lane with that rift herald as well and uh actually kick coming out the better in this early game they have about 45 seconds to try and hoover up as many plates as they can i don't think they're going to be able to easily on that bot lane without help though because uh, Kedui and Siaz pushed the lane quite nicely. Just going for that recall as well. Pugistal now should be able to finish his Mythic, which I think is Dustblade on. There it is. There's a Dustblade coming through for this Lethality Varus. You'll notice as well, he's got a tier in his inventory. It's really nice. Tier in general is an item. Uh, you can start with it, which is great, so you can get it stacking early, but also Man Immune on this current patch is still really, really strong. It works off of abilities quite nicely. There are a few champions, a lot of them assassins actually, that can work really well with Man Immune. I know Blue Cane is another one as well. Uh, all these lethality champions, you know, you build that Man Immune up, and uh, it, it's really, really nice. And Pookie Style obviously going to be going towards that one as well. But still, with those CDR boots, with, with, the, with what he's got right now, still, those Qs are going to pack a huge punch. Got another dragon spawning in around 40 seconds. I, I think, you know, we're expecting there could be a fight around this time. Let's take a stock of what items we've got on either side. Looks like the dust blade is there. Oh, and that's it in action. You know, a lot of damage coming out from that item right now. Uh, the Kraken Slayer, I believe, finished up for uh, Tristana. Uh, Stride uh -huh. Baker there for the Nar. So a couple of big items being picked up uh, for this next dragon fight here, Foxy. Exactly, and that's that's the big one right now. You know, Karim doesn't quite have his his uh, mythic item, but it's all it's all playing for this dragon. You know, and Kick should they should be aware that they're vulnerable right here, and also they should know that they don't have to play up here at all. Like no. you have the one of the best wave clearing AD carries in the game in Lethality Varus. Uh, you don't have to push up. You know this dragon is about to spawn. Your team's going to be around. You're going to go play for that one. The only bad thing that could happen right here, as far as this dragon take is concerned, is if you run it down bot lane before it spawns. Kick aren't going to be doing that. They're going to stay alive, and the dragon instead going to go over into their bodies. Yeah, I, I guess from uh, Big's perspective, they, they realize that they're, they're probably not in a strong position to fight, especially with uh, SLT on the other side of the map right now, not willing to commit his teleport for just the second dragon of the game. Uh, and, and that's what it is, Ooh. especially for Big. That is just the second dragon. It's not worth losing your life or the game over. Uh, but they do back, and that allows Pookie Style to pick up that bot lane tier one. So another tower goes into the back pocket of the Kick Gaming lineup. Yeah, I kick very, very happy with that. And also happy with that infernal soul potential. Oh, yeah. May fight, oh, may the fire dragon coming through with that poke is, oh, that is painful. I mentioned it a bit in the draft as well. Like, poke is really good against squishy team comps because the way you beat poke is you kind of, you have to engage, right? And you have to be able to walk up. It's just, it's just so hard to play dodging all the skill shots when you don't have someone that can afford to get hit by them. And it's a lot easier to dodge, or a lot easier to play against poker, I should say. When you've got the tanky members who can walk up, put that vision down, you know, and not really care too much if they get hit by a piercing arrow or by a paddle star. And there is the rel and there is the nar on the side of big, but still, especially when you're playing from a position of power like Kikar here, I don't even think rel wants to take a tanker skill shot at this point, you know? Oh, oh Mattis Law gets engaged. flash pick. The stun doesn't quite land as he gets dropped down. Here comes the unbreakable to buy some time, but the shutdown is there for the rail. And suddenly Big have turned this fight on its head. Kaskosk will just ward his team away. But Berlin International Gaming come up big against Mattis Law, and that should secure the second Rift Herald. 
And that was a great pick right there by Karen. This is the creativity of Lee Sin. We love to see it. And it's a shame he's not really in meta right now because we are missing out on plays like this. But you saw him use that Q as a gag closer. Then ward hopping and kick flashing. Ooh, this is very, very nice stuff. And Matt did have a bit of a shutdown here as well. So we're going to see it. He uses three gag closers here. Q, W, Flash. Bam! Look at that. Just bops Matislav right in his booty and kicks him into the loving arms of his mid laner. Unfortunately, actually, the shutdown did go over uh, to Seize, which is not ideal. I don't think Roe is the person you want to be funneling all your gold into. Uh, but hey, they got him down. They were able to take the health from that as well. Yeah. Uh, end of the day, someone gets the gold is always a, is always a good outcome. Uh, actually, really well played from Rika as well. Just, you know, Able to land the shuriken, jumps straight into the fight and finds the execute onto Matis Law, who hasn't had that much opportunity to flex his muscles beyond those early engages. And that's given Berlin International Gaming a good avenue back into this game now because they have that Rift Herald. They could potentially crack the mid lane tier one. They're not that far behind in gold. We are heading in towards that mid game period and teams, the teams are, are, are almost even at this stage. I think it's a good point to make is that despite Kick having advantage on the map, being in, in in the place like put in deep vision and all that lovely business big actually are not that weak individually anymore like big can definitely start contesting kick as they go to put down vision or as they start moving up and kick have to have to know that they have to respect it because yeah you've been playing in a point where you can walk around and you know just just do what you want and it's all happy days but you're kind of leaving that area right now you know we're in a different part of the game here and big absolutely can punish you for if, if you have greedy pathing that might just be something that we see as this game moves on. SLT, on the other hand, just loves pushing in this bot side as that split pressure, building up that gold for himself. He is the carry on big, and no surprise there for him to just be sitting in that side, getting all that gold. And well, it drops into the 1-3-1 now as well, like we mentioned at the start of the game, we have, you know, Kedwi just in the mid lane, pushing that with that Rift Held, he will pick up the mid lane tier one. As you said, SLT just perma pushing a side lane, and Rika kind of hovering in and out of the other side lane, just kind of being there when he needs to push the wave and then joining the fights when he needs to. Exactly, and as we mentioned too, you don't really have good matches for this 1v1. Like, who's gonna go up against Nar on the side of kick? Who's gonna go up against the Akali as well? Obviously, Scion should be able to stay alive versus Nar, but there will never be it. It's still gonna be Nar favored as far as a natural like fight goes, or you know, if the opportunity arises, SLT should be able to have the opportunity to take him down. That's just what Nar does. But even if they send the Kali versus Scion, like Scion has basically zero magic resist, right? He's got some on the chem tank, but he's he's definitely itemizing to match the Nar. And whereas you think an Akali doesn't have a great matchup into a tank like Scion, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when he's basically naked to your to your magic damage. You can still go in there and make it happen. And that will be a real problem for Kick. And they're gonna have to group up and try and like poke people out or force the engages. A bit like we might be seeing here. Actually, the sleep comes through onto C, uh, so, so he's just able to back away. I think the Infernal Soul has become a priority win condition now for Kick. Um, you can see that they they, they sort of pre-grouped around the area. They got vision control. They are desperately waiting around. C's does not have that flash available. Matis Lord won't land any of his CC, so they won't be able to take him down. And uh, this dragon will get started up now. Kick, I imagine they get contested for this because the, the, the longer you can delay the Infernal Soul for Kick, the better it is. And Kedowi actually jumps straight out of the Braum Ultimate. Lots of CC already blown, but you can see the Cat's cost on the front look line. Just look at the flank, look at oh, Nar. And look at Nar, it's coming through the flank. Here comes the Magnet Storm. They group them all up and they dive in. But right now, Kick are able to weather the storm. Matis Law picks up the kill, somehow threading the needle in the middle of the big haystack. And now Seize will drop as well. Cat's cost just unable to die. And the Nar comes through a little bit too late. It is three versus three. The Devastate is big. It is huge. And the shutdown is there. Cat's cost on the Scion doing big carry things with the big man in the top lane and it is Riku who picks up another but Cat's got oh my god it's a quadra kill I didn't even <laughs> bloody know ah oh, tank Scion what a monster <laughs> Six zero one, baby let's go okay we've got the carry unlocked we're talking about the carry from from Big B in the top lane and that it's all about kick's top it starts off not ideally here for Kick. Not getting a good Braum ulti, but Kedui jumps in a little bit too far here. Yeah. It's going to get picked off. And the main people to keep your eyes on here 
Uh, is Matt Slaw mostly? You know what? Just just watch Matt Slaw. Just watch Matt Slaw. Like he, he's able to pick out the AD carry right there. The sleep here as well is really important because SLT wants to gnaw out, and he can't do it because he got put to sleep at a really bad time for him. So Matasaur just plays this one to perfection, just dropping in and out of the fight. As you mentioned there, that Devastate is just really, really nice too to keep things going. And it, this, this is what, a relatively close fight all in all, but, you know, I wonder whether, you know, that just, just goes back here. Tag, yeah. but we're still going, my voice can't handle it, Cascos, don't do <laughs> it again one. to me. SLT is going to narrow out though. We'll only land on Taraxo. The Drowsy on the back line will take the Akali down. Matislaw again finds a key pickup, or rather not the Akali, I think he takes down uh, Karim instead. That is a very, very big sleep onto Siaz as well, and you can see that Pookie style is still going. It is a better fight for Big this time round, and the Tristana wow. jumps on the head. Pookie Ooh. style will go down, double kill for SLT and another fight around the dragon results in a big win this time round. What is going on? Two aces, both of them being five for three. It is big coming out on top, as you mentioned this time, and they are gonna pick up the plunder of the dragon as well. But my goodness, there's so much fighting going on here. 23 minutes into the game, we have 29 kills. What is this? Like, I know these two teams are picked pretty scrappy compositions, but even this is something extra. It was all about this dragon again, and this, yeah, okay, this is a little bit too far forward here from our friend in the top lane. So I know you just got a quadra kill, but that means you're a carry mate. You can't just be jumping into the front lane. I know you tank Sion, but your team needs you. It needs you to pick up all those kills. And when he is the first one to die, it is great there, four kick. And unfortunately, Matisaur as well isn't long for the world in this fight, and that's a pretty big deal. Matisaur was able, able to like stay alive for the whole fight previously, but not able to in this side. SLT, SLT popped off this fight. He had a really, really good yeah, set of stuns. His now wasn't su super influential, but just had a couple of really good wallops and was able to get some good stuns down. I actually thought they killed off the Akali because the, the 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 GFX on the uh, the model made it look. I couldn't really distinguish. I just saw the energy bar. I was like, oh wait, is Akali on the back line dead? But it was actually Karen that time around. Rika staying alive was really important because he provided a huge amount of damage, uh, which was able to take out Mattis Law in the middle of that fight too. Still, even, we, we are even. There is 500 gold between these guys at 24 minutes into the game. One kill differential between Kick and Big. These two teams from our two powerhouse regions in Group A going toe-to-toe -to -toe at every stage in the game right now. It is actually really quite even across the board. There's a 1,000 gold lead for Kedui over Pookie style. But apart from that, it's pretty equal. And that's actually really impressive for Rika specifically, who was 2,000 gold down around like the level six mark. He was really, really far behind Matt saw this game and he's been able to catch up. He's only a few hundred off of him right now. I don't really think that he he minds anymore about, about the position of, of, of his pockets. I do think, you know, in these team fights, it's gonna be someone to keep your eye on because Riku can do so much damage to pretty much the entirety of K1. You got three squishy, I don't know why I put the K1 from kick, three squishy targets. Uh, for, for, for Akali and a Scion that's stacking armor, like you can still do some pain to him too. Do, like how, do, do you think K1 need to play this a little slower though? And why am I saying K1 now? Thanks, thanks, <laughs> thanks, Sorry, that's thanks, my bad, Foxy. that's my bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you think Kick need to play it a little slower though? Because I feel like they have the range to be able to just kind of put the pressure on before the fights even starts. But every time I see a fight break out, it's just a complete slugfest at full HP every single time. I, I, get, I feel like Kick just needs to try and play the vision game a bit better, try and play it a little slower, because because right now it, it definitely feels like they're being rushed into the fight and not playing really towards their, their team comp strengths. There's two things you said there which are spot on, Kieran, okay? The first one that you said is Slugfest. Slugfest fights will favor big. Kick need to get a little bit of poke down before they engage into a fight. They don't want to take a fair fight because big will win. Secondly, vision. Really, really important when you're playing with poke compositions. It's important for big and it's important for kick. For big, it's important because you need to see where the poke is coming from so you're not just tanking these skill shots out of Fog of War and losing half your health for free whenever you move up on the map. And for kick, it's really important because if you're throwing out poke, you need to know where you're throwing it, right? You want to get people uh, walking into, into Fog of War. You want to get people walking into dark zones of the map so that you can catch them unsurprisingly and, uh, and just poke them out, right? So I do think, you know, Vision is a big thing right here. Teams need to set up, they need to sweep vision and plant vision. Both of those are really, really crucial into this game. It's a very important 
aspect to League of Legends in general, but I think especially with a team comp like this, it means even more. I could just see the frustration from Kick. You can see, like almost feel it in the way they're moving across the map right now. Um, Rika and SLT are the thorns in their summoner rift sides at this point in time. <laughs> Constantly shoving those waves into the tier twos, making it impossible for Kick to move up and get vision. And that's one of the problems that I think Kick are having. That's that's feeding into that vision conundrum that you just talked about. If your side lane waves are always shoved, how are you ever able to group to like push up and get vision around the important areas that you care about, like the Baron Pit and like the Dragon Pit? And that is the I think what Kick, uh, sorry, what Big are doing really well to deal with this this poke composition right now is is just saying well. If you have to deal with your minion waves, we're going to have vision dominance of the river at all times. Yeah, it's a great point. Legit, like if you are going into like 1v1, which does favor big, when you pick it up from the side of kick, as you say, can't group up, can't put vision down. And so then it comes, it, the onus is on big here to really use those pushing side lanes oh. to get something going. And like right here, you can see that. Look at Rika top side, you know, he's pushing that in. If he just keeps going there, he's going to get a free tower. He can also TP in and play for this dragon. But big, you know, they're, they're in a bit of a rock and a hard place right here because they want they, they can't leave the dragon at this point, right? So they're going to have to lose all of this uh, all of this farm in the side lanes. It's it's such a conundrum because the way that you deal with one three ones is the same way that you deal with pokes, right? You find a hard engage, but as a poke composition, you don't want a hard engage. Uh, it's such a conundrum for Kick, but they are going to try and force the issue. Oh my word, Kelly, we taken low by Matt's Law here. That will be a dragon secure, but it is only the second dragon for Kick. You, you don't have to lose your life over it for Big. You're doing your job by delaying that dragon soul already. I think it's an... It, mm, um, do I agree with the decision there for Big to so just give that one away? Yes, you do get that top tower, and that that is nice. And I think as well, like it's not just getting a tower, but it's also setting up... You know what, I'm going to hold the sword because Rika is on the flank. I don't, I don't think, think he's going to take that one. <laughs> yeah, no, he's not going to engage into that. <laughs> he thought about it, but yeah, just to continue what I was saying. Like, I think it means when, when you're taking a tower, it means more than just the tower itself. When you've got strong split pushes, because it means in future you can start setting up and like pressuring and threatening even stronger pushes, right? And and so this is something that Big will have as an advantage for them moving forward. And as you say, it's only the second dragon there, so maybe Big decide that's not too big. <laughs> I mean, we don't even try, but it just happened. It just happened. Not too much of a deal for that squad. And uh, instead, you know, they're just going to trade that tower for the dragon. I think I think Big are playing this really well. I think they're playing it very cleverly into the, into, into, into Kick because they know that, that Kick realistically don't want to run the Scion into the middle of the fight because they're going to lose some of that edge that you get from playing the poke before the fight even starts. So that, you know, they know that they they are not willing to make the call necessary to deal with a one three one. You know, they're not willing to just run that Scion ultimate into the middle of the fight and just try and engage straight away. So they they can go into a one four or a one three one and just very happily put that uh, split push down without any real any real um, I, I guess worry of the engage coming through from kick and kick are like well we we want to poke we want to find. The, the initial engage or poke, so we have to wait. We have to wait for neutral objectives to be able to do that. And I think that's why you're seeing them now kind of start to look towards the Baron because th they need these neutral objectives in order to force Big into a situation where they're even going to be in receiving end of the poke. Absolutely, this is the thing for Kick. You've got to give Big a reason to group up. Got him right now. Raxo is just dead. Rika picks up the first kill of the game here, and you can see that Kafkos is desperately oh. trying, but the start onto Puki Star, but double kill for Rika, and Matt's Law is down too. That was beautiful from Kick, and SLT will take the final kill, a complete ace, as the zombie corpse of Kafkos runs around like a headless chicken. Big will push through the bottom side of the map, and they may even just win the game here. They're looking to end it all right now. It's a big minion wave for them to work with. Five members strong, pushing down top. I think they've done it. I think big with their superior team fighting. They're going to take this game versus kick. They have the Tristana. Those towers will drop instantly. Raxo, the first to die, will respawn. But it is a Braum versus the world. Berlin International Gaming will go 2-0 and oh in Group A. And they will take their win over the Ultra Liga. Nicely done there for number one seed from the dark region.
Bit of a shaky start to EU Masters yesterday, almost losing out to Makers. Wanted to have a better showing today, and it wasn't necessarily an easy game for them, but I think that's fair considering you're playing versus Kick, who are very, very tough opposition. Um, but all in all, you know, being able to pick up that win, I think the way they played it as well, it wasn't, it wasn't, they weren't always ahead either. So being able to come back from a deficit, I think really shows the caliber of like a, a strong team and a team that can go far in EU Masters. Yeah, I'm really excited to break this game down a little more, but before we do, Going to shoot over to a quick break. When we're back, we'll take a look back at that game and analyze it in a bit of greater depth. So we'll see you soon. Are you guys okay? Okay, cool. All or nothing. Oh, I, I needed a breather after that game. It was wild uh, but honestly the more that i watched of that game the more that i felt that there was a real draft difference like you could see how frustrated kick were with the way the game was being played i mean it really felt like big were just turning the knobs like they were just like turning the knob of like pushing the bot lane and turning it on the top lane you know? <laughs> 
Foxy, shut up. Yeah, I I think, I think, <laughs> you're I think a child. Exactly you are. You're an actual child. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, mate. I'm just watching some League of Legends right here, and it all started pretty decently for Kick in that early game. But I think it was the the team fighting from Big uh, that was able to kind of pull them out of the depth of this this early game. This fight right here that you're seeing was in was Kick favored, and it's what gave him that lead early. Especially Matt Sol yeah. was able to get a lot going on, which then transitioned to him getting like five plays mid and all that stuff too. This, this play, dude. Yeah, this is nice. This is nice. This is really nice. Yeah, I'm glad we saw a little bit of Lee Sin. And, and, and I'm glad he won, so we might see a little bit more Lee Sin, because I know we have a lot of great Lee Sin players here in E-Masters. It's not quite the meta, but I'd love to see it. Watch the, um, he is. Watch the Akali Rel stun here. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, it's mad, isn't it? so nice. It's disgusting stuff. But exactly, exactly as you were saying, like, just team fighting prowess there for big. It was really, really, really good, really impressive. And uh, they're now 2-0 two, two in that Group A. Yeah. Where we were expecting them as, uh, as a number one seed coming out of Germany. Nice balanced damage charts as well. Like all the big carries doing their, yeah. their part. You know, Akali uh, started a bit, bit slow. Um, I actually saw C's tweet after the game. And they're the CEOs of cringing the early game. And the gold graph kind of shows <laughs> you that. You know, like they were struggling a little bit. But honestly, they just took off catastrophically. You know, like... 22 minutes of the game, just an absolutely huge rocket of gold in their favor um, and really started to take over when they were able to, I guess, push the push the side lanes and then also search for those scrappy fights when they were able to find them. I love that like dip that goes down towards kick and then comes back up towards uh, towards big because it was like we had two identical team fights. Yeah. Kick one, the first one gives them a little dip <laughs> and then another one happens straight after with yeah. big one and they're back on top again. And from there, yeah, I, I just think, you know, big played it well. And as you mentioned with the draft too, I think that, you know, big, big had, I think it played more into their strengths and it suited the meta a bit more as well with the, what they did. I, I think with what, with what Kick brought to the table, it was very one dimensional. You could clearly see what they wanted to do. They were trying to play off getting a catch with Mattis Law and then just using the arrows and the, the damage from the Zoe to just try and pick people off and use the poke and, and play through it that way. So they were looking for some very specific circumstances to set up fights that went in their favor. Whereas Big were able to say, we don't want to play your game. We're going to play side lanes where you could never actually look for poke engages. And then if you get desperate and force a fight, well, we're actually just better in the team fights anyway. So they had both edges of their sword fully oiled, ready to go, and and Kick were basically coming to the fight with a twig. Like they they they, they, they weren't really able to deal with it when it got to that yeah. stage in the game. And I think Kick maybe lost their mid game opportunity to really push things, and Big were able to get well back into the game. Yeah, I think it's it's interesting because we actually mentioned that at the beginning of the of the game how Big had this comp that was great one v one, but could still group up, you know. And they did both of those things to beat to beat Kick in that game. Yeah, Kick now are zero and two, by the way, in Group A, uh, which is kind of shocking actually for uh, for the second seed coming out of the Ultra League. Mm -hmm. Ultra League being the defending region for EU Masters, they won it all last time. So, yeah, speaking of Ultra League teams, that we are going to be seeing Rogue, the number one seed, go up against Misfits Premier uh, in our next game. And that is going to be really exciting to watch. I'm looking forward to that one. I think that's going to be a hype matchup. This felt like a hype matchup. That also feels like an incredibly hype matchup. Um, and I do like that you mentioned that Kicker zero two because we mentioned at the start of the day, Group A is spicy. I mean, we are looking at a, a really, really spicy group, and Kick are going to have to do a lot of work to get themselves back into a qualification spot. And you are looking at the, the you know, at the potential of either the GLL or the PG Nats qualifying from groups for the first time since the summer 2018. Uh, so I'm, I think we've got to keep our eyes peeled on Group A next week because I think it's going to be something that could be relatively explosive uh, towards the end of those stages. But uh, as you correctly mentioned, we are heading into our third game of the day, Mrs. Premier versus Ago Rogue. Uh, but before we do, we've got to catch our breath. So we'll see you soon.